This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, saving your day from boredom with the best podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Widmer here, along with a new cast of characters. I can't just say who I was with last time, who I will get to. You guys wanted him back so much. I said we had to come back and do another one of these. But first, I'm joined with, you guys know his name. He's on the fast break. He's on Tool the Game, Dave Oster. Hey, everybody. And coming back because you were not a heel, Pete. You were very much the face. I was a baby um, face. You're a yep. baby face. The comments loved you. I'm not going to say Becky Lynch. It wasn't a man type of reception. No, absolutely not. It was more of like Daniel Bryant before the Yes movement like became a thing. Where it's like, we like Daniel Bryant, but I, I'm not feeling a whole like Peter Creighton fan club n- yet. But Peter Creighton back on the podcast. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm very flattered to be back. Like, I did not expect it. And when you texted me, you're like, hey, people like you. Come mm-hmm. back. Uh, I was shocked. Really? You know? Yeah. I mean, I don't like... I just talk wrestling. Like, that's yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, it's easy going, Pete. It's a good yeah, listen. I mean, if you just... haven't seen episode one, go check it out. Funny thing. So, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm very self conscious sometimes, especially when I'm on camera because. So, the sock thing was true. When you said you were up, like, I'm wearing polka dot socks. What are they going to think? So, that was true. And tonight. And he's got polka dot socks on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing is, is I, I one of the reasons why I love radio and podcasting so much is you can kind of hide, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys have seen me. I've done my radio show or my podcast literally in my pajamas. Yeah. But knowing that there's a camera here, it's like, I can't do that. Ah, uh, you probably could. I could. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is the first time, blue cardigan sweater, mm-hmm. rocking another blue cardigan sweater. So I might make this like my shtick that whenever I'm on, <laughs> kind I got to like be how... the dad I at like Christmas, it. cutting the turkey and wearing a blue cardigan. <laughs> kind of like kids. how the, the new Daniel Bryan has his whole flannel thing going on. You're going to be the... The cardigan. I fucking love Daniel Bryan so <laughs> goddamn much. I love uh, the hemp title and everything. Oh, I was yes. ask you uh, like the title. Uh, uh, no, I, I love, love the, the title. title. Yeah. No, it that is, is awesome. I've never contemplated buying one of those belts before, but the hemp title is one I'm like, it's unique. Mm-hmm. It's something that's a conversation piece. And it's I think sustainable. It, yes. It yeah. is. I think every part of it is just like, all right, I sort of want to, I want to go in on that. Well, the funny thing is, is there's a movement with uh, certain wrestling people that I know Mm -hmm. where they want to have it where if you're a guy that goes to a wrestling show with one of those titles, you have to defend it. (laughs) And I love that. You have to defend the title. If you're going to wear a belt out in public, you have to defend it. (laughs) You're talking about any title, not just the hemp title. Oh, yeah. No, if you, you, even if you have a European title. You have to defend that. Like, mm-hmm. if you're in Brussels and you're just walking around, you got it. I mean, you're strutting like your it. stuff for a reason. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You have to defend the title. Now, if, if you're wearing a title in public, would you be a guy who wears the classic around the belt? Or would you go over the shoulder? Or would Personally, you peek done it and just put it in your mouth and no, water? No, I would not peek done it. <laughs> Personally, I'm old school. I would wear it around my waist. Oh, okay. Um, or I would do the straps, like, locked and mm-hmm. then over the shoulder. Mm. But I'm old school. Like, I remember Bret Hart wearing the yeah. title. Macho Man wearing the title. Shawn Michaels wearing the title. See, I think um, I'm different. Like, I, I would wear the title, but if I'm going over the shoulder, it's unstrapped. Yeah. It's not mm. going to be. It's like. I, like you, Stone Cold Steve Austin, over the shoulder, it's strapped. But you, but I you like bought it, it. I like it unstrapped. Mm. See, I see it as like a Jesus handle. So mm-hmm. that if I like lose it, it's just going to like roll down. You know, um, so that's why I would go with that. Oh, Winged Eagle, mm-hmm. WWE oh title. God, yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that's just agree. That's the, that's yes. the belt. Or, uh, the... I think that's the second time you've said that on a podcast, too, because you brought it up <laughs> it last is. time, too. I feel very strongly <laughs> Look, about this. It's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It's oh, beautiful. That, that, is a, that is a championship belt, mm-hmm. damn it. Yeah. So. so, first thing I want to talk about, the tangents are what we come here for. Yeah. Like, you and I, Ro- Royal Rumble, did we actually talk about the Rumble? Yeah, a little bit. Um, but it was basically two hours of just us talking about wrestling. It was fun. I had a good time with it. And yeah. I'm, like like I said, I'm very flattered that mm-hmm. people liked it. I'm honored to be back. I'm glad you're here with me. Yeah. Because I, we've been talking forever about doing it. didn't want to do it, it, guys. Look, I didn't want to do it for a good reason, though. <laughs> like, we, it's the smell, isn't it? I know. I'm sorry. I, I, can I sit further away? Um, <laughs> no, I mean, like, you can. For those of you who don't know, like, we, we you know, we'd pass Pete in conversation mm-hmm. and we'd just get stuck talking about wrestling for like, 20, 30, 40 minutes at a time. I was like, no. I talk. 
a lot. <laughs> and like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I should just hit record one of these times. Like, I'm having a ton of fun doing yeah. this. But then once it came time and like, I wasn't able to make the first episode mm -hmm. and I listened to it and I was like, damn, that's fun. I want to. I want to listen. I don't want to be there. Well, I'm just glad you had fun with so, it. Like, like the bar was set, Dave, and you you, you didn't know I don't you could beat ruin, the bar. I don't want to ruin anything. You're, first off, you're not going to ruin anything because it's us talking wrestling. As right. long as you have Ooh. fun and everyone has fun listening, no, you've succeeded. No, you're right. That's all that matters. Thanks, Pete. Because wrestling should be Pep talk, fun. Pep talk, Pete. <laughs> so I got a question for you guys, and I've had this circling through my head yeah. for about two weeks. Um, so I listened to a Legends of Wrestling podcast. I was bored one day. I'm like, I'm editing stuff for the channel. I'm going to throw on a podcast and listen to it. And I have been infatuated with the Monday Night Wars, maybe because that's what I lived through, um, and saw Legends of Wrestling. Oh, cool, on the Monday Night Wars. And I'm listening to it. And towards the end of the episode, after they're all coming at um, Eric Bischoff, there was a point in that podcast where him and Foley – Got a little bit heated. Uh, oh, because him of, and uh, Michael Hayes, too. Because yeah. of things that uh, where it was the night that Foley won the title, yeah, Bischoff the kind of made it seem like he was mocking Mick Foley. And they oh, got, no, he was mocking <laughs> yeah, well, right, and, yeah. and that's the thing. Yeah. It's like, you were, but then it's like, oh, Mick, I would never do that to you. I yeah. didn't mean, I did that with everybody, Mick. It's like, no, you're kind of an asshole. And that's what it was. But Disclaimer, I still love Eric Bischoff. <laughs> yeah, no. But the thing I was thinking about is towards the end, he was asked the question, did you think that WCW had a talent problem where they had Hogan, they had Scott Hall or Razor Ramon, they had all these big w X wwe guys to where their homegrown guys couldn't make it up the roster. Like there was no room at the top for the homegrown guys, so it was kind of like it's just X wwe guys. And I started to think... With all the rumors, because obviously the rumors, but like Brock Lesnar, could he go to AEW? Ooh, Dean Ambrose, his contact, his contract could be over. Could he go to AEW? I started to think, should AEW be targeting ex WWE talent if they leave the company, or should they focus on, hey, we got some guys, we've got Jericho who can be a top guy, we got Rhodes who can be a top guy or a under Jericho guy. Let's grow some talent here rather than just being a hosh posh of like WWE, uh, New Japan World Wrestling and kind of just poaching off of the other promotional companies. I'm going to let either one of you take it as Dave looks at Pete. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you want me to start? I'll let you lead in. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think they're going to do that. And I'll tell you why. I, Cody Rhodes is really smart. I mean, he's the son of Dusty, and Dusty's was a genius when it mm -hmm. comes to, to wrestling and has a mind of wrestling. And Cody really seems to have picked up that gene from his father. I really think Cody... Cody's come out and said he's an old-school wrestling fan. For me, that means um, NWA. Like, think Horseman, think the 80s, think early 90s WCW, even when Bill Watts was running it. That is kind of what Cody's a fan of. So I, I don't think Cody's going to do it. I mean, they very well may. I mean, the thing with AEW mm -hmm. is you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. right. And it's it's you could teach a class, a marketing class, how to purely use social media effectively by what they've done with AEW. I don't think they've spent a dollar on promotion. Mm -hmm. Everything has all been Cody and the Young Bucks and their social media presence and Kenny Omega. Um, but I think right there shows you who are your top guys. Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, three guys right there who have never set foot in a WWE ring on Monday Night Raw or on, on SmackDown. You have Jericho, but I mean, let's face it, Jericho is what, 45? Yeah. 45, 46? He, he doesn't have that much longer. So Jericho, he's always been a guy that gets the business and he's going to put someone over. You know, the problem with WCW, with the mid to late 90s, is you had guys like Hogan and Nash and Savage and Hall and that whole NWO clique that they weren't putting people over. 
you would get these rivalries where they would just destroy everyone because they wanted to protect their brand of the NWO. The only real people that got over was Sting and Bill Goldberg. And they really had no choice with those two guys. Um, Then as the NWO got bigger, the guys that got in it, like a Scott Steiner or a Buff Bagwell or Conan, not bad hands, but they're not at the level of Hogan. Like Hogan, okay, you're Hulk Hogan. You can call you can call your shots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Buff Bagwell should not be able to call your shots. You you haven't drawn anything. And I think that's what the problem was. I think the other problem too, and I think this is the ultimate problem that w- WCW had, was they were too concerned about beating Vince. It wasn't about making their product better. And I think there's I forgot where I saw it, but it's on the WWE network. Uh, Eric Bischoff auditioned in like 88, 89 for an announcer job with WWE and he didn't get it. But the way they, like he didn't get it, you could tell hurt him. So I think he, that caused him to have an ax to grind against the WWE Mm -hmm. and with Vince. But I think that's ultimately what, what what caused WCW to go out of business. There's like three factors. Um, More concerned about what WWF was doing at the time than opposed to um, what they were doing themselves. They didn't make new, many new stars. And think about it for a second. At one point, you have young Rey Mysterio, young Chris Jericho, young Chris Benoit, young Dean Malenko. You have Raven. You have um, uh, The Big Show. Um, I mean, you have an insane crop of talent that you could have made a ton of money with, and they just didn't do it. Um And the final factor is after worrying about WWE, not making new stars, um, the people that called the shots weren't wrestling people. They didn't understand the business. Um, It was suits with Turner Media. And they didn't see wrestling as an art form. They saw it as really mindless entertainment and anyone could do it. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. So I think that's the three things that caused WCW to fail. I don't know if AEW is going to do that. Uh, like, honestly, from what I have seen, yeah, it's exciting. It's really exciting. And from everything Cody has said and the Young Bucks have said, they're not looking to compete with Vince. Like, they don't have... You know, they're not a publicly traded company like the WWE is. They're not going to have the production value that WWE has held. They don't even have a TV deal, <laughs> as far as we know. They're running their second show. Now, granted, it sold out in four minutes, and their first show sold out, and it's 12,000-seat arenas, yep. so you can't sneeze at that. Um, but I, like, I, I, just, I see Cody as a student of the game, and I think he's going to do like almost a territorial system where you're going to partner with the NWA, you're going to partner with Ring of Honor, and do dream matchups and say, hey, don't you want to see Cody against Jay Lethal again? Or the Young Bucks against whoever the NWA has, you mm-hmm. know, I think that's what he's going to go with it. And I think he'll be successful. I hope he's successful. Yeah. I think that the the biggest thing you hit on about putting over your talent versus the existing talent, when you brought up Hogan and how unwilling he was to put anyone else over because it was Hogan's brand and Hogan had his own, basically his contract in WCW was written to, I can do whatever I feel is best for me. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, you know, there is no one quite near the level of uh, popularity, fame, and, you know, crowd captivity as Hogan in uh, in what the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes are doing. But I think Jericho becomes, like, the old man of the roster. Oh, and yeah. his creativity, his ability to write, like, incredible storylines for uh, not only matches, but also overarching shows. Yeah. I would love to see him be the guy, because... He can lose to anybody, and it doesn't matter. Like yeah. he's a guy who he can put anybody over, like you said. Yeah, he's like Bizarro Hogan in that fact. I love it. But yeah, the fact that if they bring in guys who are ex WWE guys, mm-hmm. I'm still confident that you know they pretty much can separate themselves from their image on WWE. And as long as, like you said, they don't try to become another WWE. Yeah, there will be a lot of success there because as long as they're going to keep pulling people from different, you know, smaller groups, whether it is that. Uh, Ring of Honor mm-hmm. or you know uh, NJPW, like as long as they keep getting these guys, help bring some freshness to the mm-hmm. shows and keep it f- uh, keep the matches exciting because I think that's one of the things that honestly is killing WWE right now is the stale matches. 
you know, the the lack of creativity in a lot of the matches that we saw in 2018 mm -hmm. led to what we saw at the end of 2018, where it was the like, okay, we've got to fix things. Yeah, I think, well, I think a big issue for WWE is they produce way too much content. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's three hours of Raw every week, You've two hours of SmackDown. Raw, SmackDown, an hour of NXT, then an hour of live. 205 Live. Yeah. Now the NXT UK stuff too. But I would argue like with NXT consistently has been WWE's best brand for, but, I would almost say, four years. But look who it's run by. Trips. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's and what but a is, testament to him. Is it the limited amount of airtime that makes it a special event for you? Is it the fact that we get one hour, but it's such a jam-packed hour on I a weekly so. basis? I think that's part of it. I think the other part is it's, it's basic. Mm -hmm. I think main roster WWE overthinks itself. I mean, what's the whole storyline of um, uh, Johnny Gargano and Champo? Oh my god! It's it's we yeah, were it's a tag got, team. It's, got it's visceral. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but at the end of the day, how did it start? Mm -hmm. You were weak. You cost me my shot at the tag team title, so I'm beating the shit out of you. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what it all stemmed from. Everything storyline wise for NXT comes from the ring. That's not how mainstream WWE is. I think that's what the problem with mainstream WWE is. Wrestling fans want wrestling. Mm -hmm. And so I, I mentioned to this to you guys off uh, off air. Yeah. Recently, the network added WWF superstars. Mm -hmm. So for me growing up, this is how I first got brought into wrestling. And it's freaking going down memory lane. And the best part is, is the only year they put up is 1992, <laughs> which is my favorite year of pro wrestling What a ever. coincidence. Yeah. Pete. I was going to say, as soon as you said that, I'm like, oh, we're going to get a 1992 wrestling yeah. story. <laughs> um, but watching that show, the structure is impeccable. Mm -hmm. It's all based around wrestling. It's all, here's Mr. Perfect coming out into the ring. He beats up a jobber, but then the announcers are describing why he is mad at Bret Hart and he's going to take his vengeance on Bret Hart because Bret Hart took his coveted intercontinental title. You know, it's stuff like that. It's all based up around the action in the ring. There's this moment, uh, there's a, a, an escape convict that beat up the big boss man and his name was Nails. Yes. <laughs> and Nails refused to leave the ring. And then The Undertaker came out. Now, Nails is like one of the worst wrestlers ever. And Taker had just turned babyface, the crowd freaking popped. <laughs> because here you have this guy that was literally intimidating little kids. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna stand up to him? And then it's like Batman shows up, the, the Dark Knight, the one that can strike vengeance. And you see the crowd, they're like, oh, Taker's here! <laughs> Snap! <laughs> but again, it's little, little things like that is what matters. And that's what NXT does, and they do so. Well, well, it's like the crowd is like there are some main roster crowds were like Money in the Bank Chicago. Um, there was the I think it was right after the Royal Rumble in Phoenix. Um, either the SmackDown or Raw crowd was good, but Becky was on the show, so of course the crowd's gonna get into it. NXT though, we watch it like halftime heat, we watched, and it's like that, that so crowd cool. is going crazy each and every night, and it's like. When they bring it, it's like you sing it at home. I get more yeah. into it oh, because the by crowd the way, loves did you it. watch halftime heat? I haven't yet. Oh I my haven't. god, it is it's a, a jam-packed minutes. twenty-five minutes. Yeah, and it's so enjoyable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, kudos to them for nailing that. By the way, I just yeah beat but, out Maroon Five by like a lot. But look at look at the smile on your face yeah, and no. on your mm -hmm. face when you're thinking of that match. See, that's the joy of wrestling is you got a twenty-five minute match. That told a wild story. It was nuts. Mm -hmm. And you loved it. Yep. And I think that's what the issue with with mainstream WWE is. And, uh, you know, there's various reasons for why it is why it is. I don't know what they are. I'm not privy to those conversations. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it's... Vince McMahon needs competition, in my opinion. Vince McMahon is at his best when someone is directly going at him. Mm -hmm. And I think he's been very complacent for the last... 17 years because no one really who have we had that you've had after. tna and tna made the wcw mistake where they tried mm -hmm. to go after him too soon yeah and uh ring of honor he just saw as okay this is my new ecw this is where i can go and get my my talent roster mm -hmm. <laughs> you know um, and he was right but yeah <laughs> absolutely he was right but um no i think 
it's going to be interesting to see what AEW's role evolves into. And I think that's the most exciting thing. Yeah. I think the, if I were to say one frustrating aspect for it Mm -hmm. is there's no patience. We want to know exactly what they're doing right now. And it's like, let's just relax. Like, yeah. Like sit back and, you know, Avengers is going to be three hours. We don't want to know what's going to happen yet. We have Mm -hmm. to go on that journey. That's what AEW is going to be. Let it go on the journey. We don't know what it's going to be, but it, 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 it's going to be exciting, I think. See, and the one thing I agree with you is it's a double, double-edged double sword, but it's very different. Where I've agreed with you where AEW, their mindset should be like, hey, we're just going to do our own thing. We're going to worry about us. We're not going to worry about WWE. Right. Like, if we make the product good and we make the storylines good. Oh, the people wrestling, are going to come. People, like, build it, they will come. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, on the other side, though, I want it to kind of be like that AEW is so good to where Vince feels like, okay, they are a threat. Well, and he feels like it's competition, even if AEW isn't directly coming at yeah. him. So what do you think it would take for them to do that? Do you think it's mm-hmm. a weekly you know, streaming something? Do you think it's just if they do enough uh, house shows and pay-per-view setups? Like, what, what do you think would hit the level that Vince is actually putting them on the map? I think they're already on the map. Really? Just one event and the threat well, of mean, stealing talent? I mean, I, with the mystery, like you said, we want to know now, 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 that double or nothing pay-per-view sold out like that. I don't we even, know nothing about them. Well, I don't even think it's that. Mm-hmm. I think it's Chris Jericho. Yeah. I think that's what it is. For Because for the longest time, Chris Jericho always said, I will never wrestle in any ring that's not a WWE ring. Mm-hmm. Then Chris Jericho goes and does New Japan, tells yep. Vince... Vince is cool because he says, oh, it's a one-off. But then Jericho had so much fun, he wanted to do it again. And Vince is, okay, yeah, go ahead. But then as the more came on, you can kind of, because Jericho tells the story in his podcast, mm-hmm. like yeah. Vince isn't pissed, but you can tell Vince is like. Concerned. Well, what are you doing here, Chris? I mean, it's it's like, what about me? So um, I think that's what got his notice. I mean, at the end of the day. Vince McMahon is the greatest promoter of professional wrestling ever. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. Anyone that says differently, I'm very sorry, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't build a multi-billion dollar company, you don't watch a streaming service, and you don't create something known as WrestleMania and not be called the greatest guy ever. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, he's it's, got the resume and he's it's, got the resume. nobody's even close. It's, it's by, a, by miles. Yeah. I mean, the, the one that probably only comes closest is Paul Heyman. Mm-hmm. And even with that, Paul Heyman failed ultimately. Yeah. That being said, um, Vince is paying attention. He absolutely is paying attention. And I think he's looking to see where this plays out. And I think that's, what's going to happen. I think you're kind of seeing little things like that with this now, like, okay, who won the tag team titles this past week on Raw? It's the Revival. Yeah, You're seeing a little bit more promos where they're still very scripted, but they're getting a little bit more, like, cutting in and everything. Mm-hmm. It's crossing the crossing the line a little bit. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, where you can see, like, they're, they're doing natural reactions and things yeah. like that. The, the issue is, is something happened where Vince felt like he couldn't trust people anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't know when it happened or where it happened, but something happened with that. And that's where they instituted, okay, you need to memorize these scripts. That's where these people don't get over. They can't be authentic. Mm -hmm. You know, when you fell in love with Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock, you (sighs) fell in love with them because they were literally themselves. They would say, okay, Austin, you're fighting Rock. These are your bullet points that you have to hit in your promo. Go. Mm -hmm. And then Stone Cold was Stone Cold. And then you just fell in love with them. Um, you don't have that now. I think that's a big reason why Roman Reigns is not over. Mm-hmm. Roman Reigns should be over. Like, but it's because he was re- like he was in the era of hey, read the script rather than here's your bullet points. I think that's part of it. I think the other big part of it was uh, he won that Rumble the year everyone mm-hmm. wanted Daniel Bryan to win the Rumble. The push sure. to infinity kind of hurt a lot. <laughs> it did, but at the same time. You cannot argue that he hasn't delivered. Oh, he mm-hmm. he, he has become a great wrestler in Absolutely. the ring. Yeah. And I, I just think it was the, the thin personality that really hurt because, like you said, mm-hmm. when you're stuck reading a script, yeah. there is no genuineness to Absolutely. the lines you're delivering. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. I don't know many guys who could pull that off well. So yeah. it really put him in a hole. And I think the, the paper-thin personality that we were able to see 
it, there wasn't enough for people to grab onto and get behind this guy. Yeah, well, absolutely. I want to steer the con- like we're on something. I want to throw something in. It's totally going to go away from AEW, but I don't care because it's on what we're talking mm-hmm. about right now. Okay. It's like the Becky Lynch stuff, the Becky Ronda Charlotte stuff to me, where you bring up Stone Cold. Why do I love Becky so much right now? Because of like when she's saying what's on the mic, you can tell like, oh, there's a little bit of truth to that. Like you, what you were saying about Daniel Bryant the last time we talked about him on the podcast. Why is he such a good heel? It's like, oh, I hate what you're saying. You kind of got a point there. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing that I was thinking about recently is on the last Raw where Vince comes out, says, hey, Becky, you're suspended. Charlotte's now in the match. And the thing that I wonder, and maybe I'm off base here, is, is that Vince, is that management going, hey, we've got four months till WrestleMania. Becky's a proven veteran. Ronda, although she's getting a lot better in the ring, and she's a name, and like you said, Pete, when she comes out of that backstage and she's got the smile on her face and you connect to her, is it something where they look and they go, okay, we got to get to April. Is she good enough on the mic with the bullet points to build a feud with Becky, or do I have to infuse a Charlotte Flair in there to take some heat off of Ronda? Because like there were a lot of people that were like the one promo where yeah. Becky came out, Rhonda's talking, and then you hear like the boos, and Rhonda starts to like slur her words together, and they all kind of mush together, and people are like, "Oh, the the fans are getting to her." Is that on this? Is that something totally different? It's just they wanted all three of them in the main event from the beginning. Um, I mean, it could be all of it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, um. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Becky's actually hurt right now. She's got, like, a bad knee. Mm -hmm. So I think they're just doing this for a reason to get her off TV or get her so she can rest her knee so that she can be ready to go for Mania. Um, I think it's a multitude of things. I think... I don't think there's any doubt in anyone's mind that Ronda Rousey could not carry a match to WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. Ronda doesn't need to talk. She's Ronda Rousey. Yeah. And not only that, Becky can carry the entire feud. Mm -hmm. Just give her the stick. I think, oh, I saw, I got it now. Okay, um, no, yep. I think with, um, I think by added in Charlotte Flair, I think they're they're pivoting in that. I mean, the big rumor is Ronda's done after Mania, mm-hmm. so you got to set up your next thing. So the natural thing is to get Charlotte and and Becky feuding again, but not only that, when did Becky become the man in the the in the fans' eyes? It was SummerSlam mm-hmm. in a triple threat match that had Charlotte. How sweet would it be for that character to get justice at the grandest stage of them all in a triple threat match for the women's title against not only Ronda Rousey, but Charlotte Flair. And she finally gets her moment where she gets to say, I have proven you wrong. Mm-hmm. I am now the boss. I am now the man. For me... That's great storytelling right there. Like, that's like goosebumps right there. Because, again, it's taking something like Charlotte coming out with the smile and talking about how she deserved Mm -hmm. it. Perfect. It's awesome. Like, you just see it and you're like, bitch. (laughs) Like, I I hate you so much. Once again, you're stealing Becky's moment. Yeah. But, again, I think it's, it's, it's good booking. I mean, you're... If Becky's injured, which I think she is, you're taking lemons and you're making lemonade with mm-hmm. it. And not only that, I mean, again, Mania is not until, what, the last week of March? First week of April? First week of April. I think yeah. it's April 7th. So you have six weeks to go. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot can happen in, in six weeks and everything. So, I, I again, I would just say let's sit back and see where it goes. I mean, I'm pretty confident Becky Lynch's main eventing WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's happening, you know, barring some horrendous turn in her rehab or, yeah. you know, in that knee. But I, I would absolutely love what you said as far as the lead up, the build to, you know, the, the redemption arc at Mania. Yeah. And then all I want is Charlotte to go absolutely ballistic on <laughs> Becky for the next, like, two weeks. Just, just absolute nightmare, showing up, chairs, Anything she can grab, just beating the living shit out of her. Oh, yeah. And just setting up the next. Because I'm like, I love that aspect of Charlotte's character when she snaps and she just goes nuts. And And I'm like, she goes nuts. She Mm -hmm. is insane and it sells so well. And I'm like, 
Give me that. Give me Becky topping her, which sets up Charlotte to just go over the edge. And we just see Charlotte absolutely losing it on a nightly basis. I, oh. You're talking about this is after Mania. Postmania. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm, so I'm like, booking Postmania so like already. Sorry. Becky, so Becky wins the yeah. title at yeah. WrestleMania. Pete, Pete set up Mania. Yes. Like, and here's the thing I want to mention. This is heel Charlotte that made me go, mm-hmm. all right, that was good. Was <laughs> this past week on SmackDown, the crowd is like, Becky, Becky, and Charlotte without missing a beat. Oh, oh, maybe if I point to the sign, she'll come out. <laughs> no, she didn't come out, guys. That doesn't work like that. <laughs> but that's like, that's the great thing. And I'm thing. like, and yeah. I'm like, I hate you, but yeah. yes, yes, that was good. But that's that's <laughs> such the great heel movement. Like, I always get frustrated when I go on wrestling websites and they always talk about, well, mm-hmm. people can't get over. They can't get over. And it's like, but they can. Like Charlotte's over mm-hmm. as a heel. Daniel Bryan is over as a heel. Like, who would have thought that? Yeah, mm-hmm. that that took some interesting creative moves, but and wow, how, did they surprise me. And how great has it been? Yeah, no, it's I, incredible. It, it's been stellar. How over is Seth Rollins as a baby face? Mm-hmm. Like, you just want to see him beat the living shit out of Brock Lesnar. Well, like even, I want white tights mania. <laughs> yeah. You, you bring up Seth Rollins. The thing is, uh, Dean Ambrose this week on Raw, how he went off script. He was supposed to have a longer promo, but all he went out there and was like, slay the beast. Yeah. And now... It, He's turning back into it to me was like, okay, we're gonna end this feud and you guys are gonna be friends again. Well, yeah, well, and plus, I mean, it's common knowledge Dean hasn't resigned mm-hmm. a contract, yeah. so he's on his way out and things like that. But you know, I mean, you never know. I mean, stranger, I, I firmly believe when Vince McMahon says anything can happen in the world wrestling mm-hmm. entertainment, I that it's true. I mean, they pivot on a dime, they, they really pivot do. on a dime and. You know, who would have thought, I would have never thought that Brock Lesnar would come back. This is back in like 2012. Yeah. And he comes back and it's like, wow, Brock Lesnar's back. You know, who would have thought the ultimate warrior would have come back with all the bad blood? I am a firm believer that at some point CM Punk is going to accept his Hall of Fame. Did you see Jeff Jarrett and Road Dogg out there? Yes, I did. Like, where did... Jeff Jarrett, I'm sorry, sir. It was the threat of you will never <laughs> never be in a ring again. You will never be mentioned on Raw again. Nothing, and nothing, they put nothing. him against Elias. Yeah. And Set up for a guitar match. Yep. Yeah. It's a guitar match. And God, I remember the big controversy with uh, Road Dogg actually singing for him and Jeff Jarrett mm. taking. Like, that was the yep. old wrestling storylines mm. I grew up with. Good well, old Roadie. My yeah. favorite was, it was like one of the last two weeks when he was on. And Road Dogg starts doing this. He goes... Doggy style. Oh, wait, wait, wait. PG, we're, we're PG, PG PG now. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Or like a fan shouted something at him. He goes, hey, this is a family-friendly show. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. can't say that, mister. See, I love stuff like that yeah. where it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, we're acknowledging it. We know you don't like it, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. there you go. That's what it is. I want to pivot, though. You talked about pivoting. Let's pivot. Okay. Elimination Chamber this Sunday. I was talking to Dave earlier, Pete, and originally our plan to let them in on it was – you know what? We'll do like four a year. We'll do the big ones. Um, but let's be honest. We got the comments. I liked the views. I liked recording the podcast, <laughs> which was among itself. And I was like, I'm just going to throw the carrot out there. Hey, Pete, you want to come well, back and talk wrestling? It, it's funny. I because... wasn't sure you were going to say it because like the one thing we were adamant was like, we're not going to make it like a monthly thing. We're just going to be like. Okay, every once in a while we'll get together. Well, we can still do it every once in a while. But yeah, it was funny because I didn't think of that at first. And then, like, a couple days ago, I'm like, isn't the chamber this Sunday? I think the chamber's (laughs) Sunday. So I texted my sister because my Mm -hmm. sister's a big wrestling fan, too. I'm like, Kel, is is the chamber Sunday? She's like, yeah. I was like, huh. (laughs) Okay. What a coincidence. I see what's going on now. Uh, But no, it's fun. I had a blast doing it. Like, I, I had. I had a lot of fun talking wrestling, mm-hmm. and it's been a long time since I've had fun talking wrestling well, and everything. That first one I could tell, and maybe Dave, you listening, was like, yeah. we're going to open this box of Peter Creighton talking wrestling. You could tell you haven't talked wrestling in a while, and it's like you've been itching to talk about it. Yeah. Like, I, not in a bad way, but like, hey, you've been suppressed, and we're we're, we're, we're letting you Giving you a platform a and a microphone. Yeah. I, Go to town. I, 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 here's your soapbox. <laughs> I was celibate, and now I'm in a relationship again, <laughs> yes. is what it is. Yeah. No, I mean, God, I started watching it when I was seven years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, the first thing I ever remember watching for professional wrestling. So we weren't... So WWF Superstars was on Channel 32 mm-hmm. yep. here in Chicago at, like, 11 o'clock or noon. And it was Saturday morning, so it would be cartoons. 
but my parents did not allow us to watch wrestling, <laughs> specifically my mom. Uh-huh. And I vividly remember my sister sneaking it and watching it in her bedroom and me going, because I was six or seven, Kelly, you can't watch that. I'm going to tell mom. <laughs> but I saw The Undertaker shove The Ultimate Warrior in a casket. <laughs> and I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And um, then it was um, SummerSlam 91. I forgot how I saw it, but I saw SummerSlam 91. And that was my first like pay-per-view. And then I got the... Uh, I used to get all the magazines, mm-hmm. and the first magazine I had was uh, Bret Hart with the Intercontinental title after he won it for the first time. And I was hooked and just watched it, and then we would – there's a, a video store uh, here in Chicago called Popcorn Video mm-hmm. where we would go and I'd run all my wrestling tapes and everything, and uh, I, I was hooked since then. Do you remember your first? Because I don't. The first match I saw? No, or? Just yeah. the thing that got you hooked on wrestling because I'll be honest. All I remember is that – I love Stone Cold from the start and those video games, man. Those N64 yeah. video games. Oh, No Mercy were, or, or no, WrestleMania 2000? My two were, I had a bad one and a good one. Mm-hmm. My bad one was Warzone. Oh, God, uh, yeah, that was, was an terrible. awful game. <laughs> but my, <laughs> shit. my, and I'm going to say great ones were the WCW ones, especially NWO Revenge. Oh, yeah, that was a like, great game. I yeah. would always, like I was telling you the other day, yeah. Dave, I felt like it was, wow, the WWF one is bad. But man, the the roster on this WCW one and everyone that you can play as. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is now he has my games because I yes, sold I you do. my N64. And your N64. Yeah. And then, <laughs> uh, so on uh, WWF 2000, WrestleMania 2000, mm-hmm. I created like a ton of characters and I'm in it. I created, you, yeah, I created but myself in was that. Was that on the game cartridge or did you need a memory card for that? It was on the memory card. Okay. So if you have my memory card still and you, you can play as Pete. You I can, can play as Pete Curry. Uh, it's the Punisher in that game. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I even created Man Cow in it because I used to listen oh to Man God. Cow all the time. Oh. So, so well, no, but I would say your first memory is the video games, which Probably. is awesome. What yeah. about you? For me, it was, I, I got lucky. Uh, my first match, I know it was mm-hmm. a Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels match. Oh. I don't remember when or where. I just remember watching it, and it was me and my brother and my dad. Okay. Um, and it was just like we're flipping past something, 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 and wrestling. And my dad like makes some joke about like, yeah, it's not like it used to be or something like yeah. that. And like just started watching, and all I remember was uh, Shawn Michaels going for a super kick, missing, and about like a move later, it was Bret Hart going for the sharpshooter, and I was like, what is this amazingness in front of me? Yeah. And then not too long after that. Um, I was on vacation actually, and it was during the NWA era where mm. Carl Malone oh, and yeah, Dennis D- Rodman, yeah, DDP, yeah, and DDP were yeah. all set up. And I actually was staying at a hotel the same night as a WCW Nitro was filming, and their motorcycles, the NWO motorcycles oh. for them, was out front. And I remember getting pictures with the motorcycles. <laughs> That's awesome. And seeing Carl Malone and Rodman and DDP. That's amazing. And That's it was a just great like story. I was like. I can't believe I'm here at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah. But yeah, no, that was that was uh I was only, going out west. Not only wrestling greats, Dennis Rodman. Well yeah. Bulls fans like, oh my god, it's Dennis freaking Rodman. But it was Carl Rodman. Malone also who's too. basically well, the but, heel. And not only that, they hated each other yeah. too. Mm-hmm. So it was like playing into well, that and everything. Well that's like I've told you, I think it was um I was listening to Joe Rogan podcast and he had Great DD, podcast. He had DDP yeah. on. Yeah. And the funny story he told about that time was he's like before that match. Rodman came in and he was like, the thing is back in that day, like if I had a chair shot, now it's going to hit you in the head. The way he said it was, it's like, you better come at me, fucker. Like, you better <laughs> hit me right in the head and make it real. Cause we got to sell this. But also he told Rodman, you're going to hit me in the back with the chair. I want to see you hit this w- piece of wood with the chair. Cause I guess like with a chair, you had to hit it square. Like if you hit yeah. one first, I'm breaking a rib or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's got to go clean. So he's like, I had him do like four or five times clean on that chair before I let him hit me in the back yeah. with it. Yeah. And I remember it was, it was wild. Yeah. It was summer of 98. There you I, go. It was summer 98 or yeah, it was summer 98. It had to be. Yeah. Cause I was going like, I was on a family vacation out to Colorado or something yeah. and we were going through there and I just remember oh. seeing the motorcycles realizing it's like mm. i've seen these before yeah. where do i know them from and then seeing them <laughs> in a hotel lobby it was just like it's wild man like, yeah yeah it's oh god I, I i was eighth grade when that was going on i vividly remember like getting into and getting into fights with my friends who were 
I was always WWF. Mm-hmm. I, I just always was. And yeah. I had friends who were WCW guys. See, I was WCW. Like, were you? I just, I liked the cast of characters. I liked the roster way better. That Like, it was, I loved everyone on WCW, mm-hmm. but Stone Cold was my guy. Like, if I had to pick <laughs> one, like, Stone Cold, I would always oh. go to WWF for Stone Cold. Uh, understandable. Understandable. I would actually argue, though, that Summer of 98 had the greatest story of wrestling, the greatest mm-hmm. build-up ever. Really? Yeah, Highway to Hell. Taker's, uh, Taker, Austin, SummerSlam. It's the greatest build ever. Because mm-hmm. it got fully involved. It got Kane involved. It was all part of Mr. McMahon. The Rock was in the background. I mean, there's so many elements yeah. to it. Yeah. Now, I'm trying to remember because I don't remember if that's the storyline that I stopped at when I was like, hey, I'm just going to yeah, watch every pay per view. That's not the one where Stone Cold took on. It wasn't Mankind. I think it was Dude Love for the title. So he did it twice. So uh, The first one he got screwed, right? Or one of them he got screwed by Mc, McMahon where the chair, he ducked out of the way and hit yeah, McMahon hit. in the head, right? Yeah, so what happened was, so Austin won the title at 14. Mm-hmm. I think it's a backlash is the next one. That was uh, Dude Love and Austin. That's where Austin ducked and like, fo- like McMahon hit Foley instead mm-hmm. with the chair. Then the next pay per view might have been like fully loaded or an over the edge or mm-hmm. something like that. It was uh, uh, Vince was like the referee, Patterson was the, like the timekeeper, and everything was stacked yeah. against Stone. But they said one, if Austin could get one person to keep McMahon in line, he could have it, and it was Taker. Mm-hmm. And the crowd just popped for it because it's like, well, of course Taker could. So Taker makes sure everything was done clean. Then Foley became Mankind. Then Taker and Foley went into the Hell in the Cell. Then it was Austin and Kane. Because McMahon's like, well, I need to get a monster now. Was, yeah. that, a, was that the first blood match? That was first blood at King of the Ring where Kane actually won. Mm-hmm. And then he dropped the title, I think, the next night. And then it was weird because then like Kane and Mick Foley got the tag team titles. And then they were feuding with Taker and Austin because they had the tag team titles for a while. But then they weren't gelling. And then it set up SummerSlam uh, 98, uh, Undertaker, McF- uh, Undertaker uh, Stone Cold, which that match should have been way better, but it was because uh, uh, Taker uh, knocked Austin out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he like, cl- yeah. like hit his chin and everything. Austin tells this great story. He gets uh, uh, bumped by Taker and he's down on the ground. He doesn't know where he is and he goes to Earl Hupner. The uh, referee goes, Earl, where am I? And Earl's like, you're in the garden, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's on, I think, the the Stone Cold podcast with mm-hmm. Ric Flair. Yeah. Um, on the network and everything. But, yeah, I mean, I sentimentally, I really like the Attitude Era. But I think we need to be realistic with the Attitude Era. There's not a lot of great wrestling matches. It's the storyline that's incredible. Yeah. I was thinking about that. This week, because yeah. you had said that before, yeah. And I'm watching Raw this week because I taped it. I was watching it on Tuesday, and it was the whatever match that Finn was in this week, and he's like off the ropes and like spinning around. And I'm like, wow, the technicality in the matches now make you go like, man, that was fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. Whereas it's like the Attitude Era was like. Oh my God! Did you see Stone Cold with the beer truck and yeah. the hose? Yeah, and he just just it was hose moments. the ring. Yeah, that's what it is. Like when you think of the Attitude Era, the moments are the beer truck, mm-hmm. the cement in the truck, fully off the cage, the, the Kurt, tank, the tank, the Kurt Angle milk truck. Don't forget yeah. that one. <laughs> um, well, actually, I would argue that, like the good wrestling doesn't start showing up until like late '99, early 2000, because mm-hmm. then Angle's there, Jericho's there. Uh, Edge and Christian, Hardy Boys, Dudley Boys are in their feud. Well, like you told oh, me, yeah. I think it was on the last podcast where I'm at the I'm at the bad WrestleMania, basically. Fifteen, um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and you, <laughs> oh. and, although WrestleMania 2000 is not that much better. And you told me you're like, you know what? Just fast forward to where Jericho debuts. Just skip everything to where Jericho debuts, and mm-hmm. you're fine. Yeah, absolutely, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, like, oh God. It's so bad. It's just so <laughs> bad. Like it's it's. But again, it's the storylines. It's what's going to happen with mm-hmm. Austin, and then what's going to happen yeah. with The Rock, and it's that saga. Um, I mean, honestly, for me, I would say like wrestling wise, like now is incredible. Like early to mid two thousands is great. Mm-hmm. Like when Cena's first starting to get hot. Like 
Mania 20, 21, 19 is great. I think 19 might be my yeah, favorite WrestleMania. I mean, you have uh, uh, Jericho Shawn Michaels in yeah. the Dream Match, which is a great match. Uh, Rey Mysterio against version one of Matt Hardy. <laughs> Love that character, yes. by the way. Um, yeah, that uh, the main event's Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle, and they legit wrestle in the beginning of that match. Yeah. Then Brock almost dies. Are you telling me that wasn't a planned fail at shooting star fries? <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. if Shane McMahon can land one <laughs> at age, what is he now? Like Old. Old? <laughs> age old man. Age uh, old man. I'm so bummed because you know what's going to happen. We're going to get a Miz uh, Shane McMahon match man. at WrestleMania, oh, and I don't want 100, that. 100%. Well, that's the big thing, too, that, and I don't want to go into this, but I'll bring it up, is... Uh, I, I don't want it, but I'm gonna. <laughs> I, I was looking on Twitter, and, like, the big thing is everyone's, like, for that feud, they'll give the Usos the title. Kind of like what you mentioned earlier. I don't know, man. One of the well, Usos was arrested that, today for well, drunk driving. That's, that's really? What I, was gonna yeah. bring I didn't up. hear that. That's He's what I was going to bring police. up. What? <laughs> like legit, he like took. I guess he took his shirt off and like, uh-huh. he was, yeah, he was gonna uh-huh. fight and the then, police. And then that because Naomi was with him. Yeah, so it was Naomi and Jimmy. Yeah, oh I, was, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah. So um, you've got the match, and everyone's like, "Oh, they're gonna give the tag teams to the Usos." Kind of like you said with the revival. Oh, you're unhappy. Your contract is coming up in June for the Usos. Here, be some tag team yeah. champions. That'd but then great. that, but then that happens, and he gets arrested in Detroit. Jesus, and Naomi got arrested too. So we'll see. They're not going seat. anywhere. No, the, the Usos are going to stay in WWE. They're too over mm-hmm. with them. Um, well, don't they got the family ties too? Well, yeah, yeah of, course, of course, of yeah. course. But so, I mean, well, Roman and The Rock, and they're yeah. all the, mm-hmm. they're they're related, and that family has had yeah a, a history of yeah. great wrestlers. But I think that. It's just they've been one of the most stable tag teams in the WWE for like the past what seven years. Easy, easy, and, and they've put on consistently, uh, you know, like four four star matches. Like it's been, I know Melter Scale for everybody isn't the thing, but like yeah, he they've put on really good matches consistently, mm-hmm. and that's a very weak tag team division at times, and they can always lean back on them. Yeah, well, I mean, just their whole feud with the New Day is just awesome. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um. I'd like to propose a wrestling topic for us at one point. Go ahead. Dave Meltzer. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'd be a long one. <laughs> yeah, Dave Meltzer. I mean, like, if we're going to do wrestling stuff, mm-hmm. like, I love just talking, like, stuff like this. Yeah. But let's go Let's go bigger themes. Like, like I, I would love to, like, because uh, I'm just going back to what we used to do with mm-hmm. Rumble. Let's talk, okay, favorite bad guys. Who's the, run- I mean, it's 2019. Wrestler of the Decade. Of this, Ooh. so of uh, 2010 to, to, to end of 2019, who's the wrestler of the decade? I want to say AJ Styles. Well, that's... that's I'm, yeah. No, no, I'm just saying I want to. Yeah. Well, I don't know what I would say, let but me, if, me... if you put a gun in my head right now without thought, that's my default. Let's... But I'd love to have a full show on it. Yeah. yeah. Let's throw it this way. I like what you're thinking, Pete. I had something... We're doing production meetings on air right now. <laughs> yes. I had, I had something in the bag. That's how we roll, I man. you guys I love this. It. I will ask you this question. Yeah. Okay. Best tag team of all time. Oh, fuck. Because <laughs> I, I was... We were just going to talk like tag team moments and stuff. What would you say is your tag team... That you because elimination chamber where you get the first women's tag team. Please be the iconics. Please, Please be the iconics. <laughs> it's gonna I be love Sasha the and iconics Bailey, so much. But, oh, yeah. it is, and I'm totally fine you with know, that. I I will riot and cancel. I will cancel my WWE subscription. No, you're not. If, Stop that. If Nia Jax gets the title, that's oh. actually fair. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. Fair. I'll allow that. If, Ain't if gonna Nia and Tamina win the title somehow, yeah, it's for literally... a month. At least a month, I will cancel and not give them my that's money. The, that's after the worst WrestleMania, because I can't. Yeah, yeah. after WrestleMania, yeah. They, they're not going to hey, win. Da- it, hey, Dave, what's your password? Yeah, I was yeah. say. I think it's going to be Sasha and Bailey, which they're mm. very worthy first yeah. time champions. I just love Iconic because they're just such a good oh villain God. tag team. Um, but good to go back to your question. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's such a loaded question. Yeah, well, it's so subjective. I mean, for me, I just go back to. Which era? Yeah. I mean, well, like growing up, like for me, um, the Rockers were just so exciting Mm -hmm. and they were so fast paced, but they were very 80s. Yeah. Um, (laughs) The Hart Foundation, Bret Hart Um. and Jim Neidhart, uh, Demolition, Legion of Doom. Um, We can even go like deep and go two dudes with attitude, (laughs) Shawn Michaels and Diesel. 
Um, <laughs> but like Head Shrinkers were a fun tag team. But I, I think though, if you're going to say arguably the greatest tag team of all time, I, I think it's got to be Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard, part of wow. the half of the Four Horsemen. Yeah. I mean, every match I've ever seen with them, it's it's insane. It's so good. It's like the revival, only better. It's it's the OG revival. It That's, is. Yeah. Um, I would say that. I'd say probably a very very close second would probably be probably Rock and Roll Express. Yeah, I mean that's yeah, that's who I would go. But for me, my favorite. That's one, what like cause is you that greatest all time? Your favorite because well, there's different because you could set up. I think greatest of all time too. for me, in my opinion, the greatest tag team of all time is probably Arn and Tully. Okay, mm-hmm. my favorite tag team of all time is the Hart Foundation, the original Hart mm-hmm. Foundation with Bret Hart and Jim Neidhart. Nice. Um, I kind of had a feeling you were going to say that. I well, mean, I'm a Bret Hart guy. <laughs> yeah, I just I am. I'm a Bret Hart. Did guy. you own the glasses? No, I got them from Brett. You got them from Brett? <laughs> yeah, so... I need a story, you're, dude. Okay. I am... Yeah. Dude's um, jaw just dropped. Uh, October 1992, they <laughs> ran. I, I, guys, I have a really weird memory. And I, I just... Say, you are an encyclopedia of wrestling, so... I was, I was <laughs> impressed earlier when you yeah. were just quoting off match after match to a build-up to another pay-per-view, yeah. but this is... this I, And I'm like this with, like, family stuff, too. Yeah. It's weird. Like, my, my folks are concerned about it at times. <laughs> I think they want to have me tested, but no. Do you um, read the calendar every Christmas, though? Uh, that's important. You got the calendars. Supreme Court Justice uh, Brett Kavanaugh told us that that's important, Pete. Oh, oh I'm sitting there. I'm like, what, what are you talking about, <laughs> yeah. calendar and Christmas? No, I don't have <laughs> calendars like that. No, um... Uh, we went to our first house show mm-hmm. because it's burned in my memory. We were going because Undertaker was there. And at the last second, uh, he was pulled from the card. And my my mom legit called up WWE offices. <laughs> and they're like, we just spent all this money on tickets to see The Undertaker. And now he's not there. Um, no, she wrote a letter. And then they, <laughs> WWE called her. And they're like, you know, we're, we're very sorry, but he's hurt. He separated his shoulder. That's why he's not on the card. But can we have your address, please? Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, okay. And they literally sent my entire family every single piece of Undertaker merchandise available at that time. It was this huge box. Like, we had mugs, we had T-shirts, we had posters. And then a couple weeks later, we got another um, package. And it was an envelope. And it was all autographed pictures of The Undertaker, which mine is still hanging in my bedroom wall. (laughs) It says to Peter the Undertaker, and he draws a line to a casket. But anyways, um, <laughs> oh my god, it's awesome. Um, uh, Bret Hart had just won the WWF title, so I was okay with still going. So yeah. we hung out. Back in the day, you could hang out by the dressing room door entrance because it was a different time. It was different Total time. Totally different time. Totally different time, and it was awesome. Like met Shawn Michaels. Met the Bushwhackers. They licked my head outside. <laughs> um, who else did we meet? We we met a ton of people there. Yeah. And we met Bret Hart. And Bret Hart came. I, I remember. I'm seeing it right now. He came. He was carrying a duffel bag. I ran up to him. I was eight. I was like, oh, my God, champ. Congratulations. And he's like, thanks, little guy. I'm like, do you have the belt with you? He's like, sure do. And he kneeled down and he opened up the bag and the belt was in the bag. Oh, my God. And it was like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. It was like meeting your superhero. Yeah, it literally was. <laughs> so we had, um, we had, we weren't ringside seats, but we were like four rows back. And uh, my sister and I, we ran to the guardrail. Rail, and when he came out, he saw me and he gave me the glasses. So mine aren't like autographed or anything. This was before he would do the autographs. Yeah, they're just glasses. Yeah, I, I know where they are. I'll have to bring them one day. They're pink glasses, and they say Hitman going across across it. So baller. But yeah, but Bret Hart gave me those glasses and everything. And the funny thing was, about 10 years ago, he wrote his autobiography, and he did a book signing mm-hmm. uh, up at the Borders in Schaumburg. Yeah. And I wanted to bring the glasses <laughs> and tell him the story, and I couldn't find him at that point. <sighs> But I got my autobiography autographed by him. Nice. If Pete, you've never read Pete's Reed like, Red Hart's book, it's awesome. Yeah, it's like I couldn't tell him the story without the glasses. It would just seem weird without Wait, the glasses. Wait, you didn't tell him anything? You just got it signed? No, I um, uh, I, I, I told him something pretty emotional. I, uh, okay. Uh, so we got there late. So we were at the very end of the line. Mm-hmm. And he had a huge ass line. So we were scared we weren't going to get him. It was me and my dad. My mm-hmm. dad went with because my dad's a wrestling fan. So I was like fifth to the last. So, but because of that, we got to talk to him a little bit longer. 
So I went to Brett and I told him, I said, I, I got to let you know, when I was growing up, I had two heroes and you were one of them. And he was, he was taken back. He's like, thank you. You know, he goes, that really, that really means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I hope after you read my book, I'm still your hero. And uh, I told him he was because my sister had got me the Canadian release of the book. So I had already <laughs> read it. And I told him, I go, no, you're, 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 you're totally my hero, hero still. Yeah. I go, um, cause I was picked on a lot in, in school and, uh, but I had Bret Hart and I told him that I go, you know, I, I, I always like, I had you, like you had no yeah. idea who I was, but I had you. And I got to tell him that and he was really touched by it. Nice. Um, and I also got to interview him too. Mm -hmm. And I have that interview. Um, I'm going to give you these interviews. To, to air. <laughs> Last podcast, he says he's a Becky Lynch interview, now yep. a Bret Hart interview. Yeah, I got to find Becky Lynch. But yeah, we have a Becky Lynch interview. Well, we don't have Becky Lynch. We have Rebecca Knox. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. But yeah, we have that somewhere. Um, but you have basically who became the man. Yes, we have that. I have that somewhere. It's it's either on a hard drive at home or Ooh. it's on it's in my office where all those Rumble Radio CDs are. No, the ones I know I have, immediately I know where they're at. Are my two Chris, the two Chris Jerichos, Jake the Snake Roberts, Mick Foley, actually two Mick Foley's, um, Cesaro, Chris Hero, who is Cassius Ono, know, right? Um, uh, Bret Hart, uh, Jerry Lynn, Rob Van Dam. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Talked about legalizing marijuana on the radio here. <laughs> I was going to have a heart attack, yeah. Rob. <laughs> God, I didn't know what to do. I was trying to get hired here at the university we're recording at, and yeah. he's talking about legalizing weed. Of course. Um, yeah, we have that. Uh, the Daniel Bryan. I have Daniel mm -hmm. Bryan and Colt Cabana. I have those. Yeah, I, I, we, I found them all and everything. Those are the ones I have that I can give to you. It's exciting if you want stuff. them. I would, lo I oh, would Ted personally DiBiase. love them. Yes. Yeah, I have Ted DiBiase and um, Nigel McGuinness. I have a Nigel McGuinness one because we used to do the, just the plethora of interviews that you could just scroll right through them basically. So the first show we ever did was called the Mania of Wrestling. Mm -hmm. So that was our WrestleMania special. So for Mania Wrestling 2, we followed the WrestleMania 2 theme where it was in three locations, New York, yeah. Chicago, Los Angeles. So our theme was past, present, future. So the past for that show was Ted DiBiase. Mm -hmm. The present was Mick Foley. <laughs> And then the future was Nigel McGuinness. Oh, that's awesome. And that was the theme. So those were our three guests on that show. That is so cool. Yeah. Nigel, great guy. Really good interview. He was really cool. So we'll just end this this way because I am taken back of like where to go from here. So Honestly, you said, themes. Let's so, do themes. So you said the Bret Hart, the Hart Foundation is your tag team. Yeah. Your favorite. Yeah, what's yours? I know I, yours, but I'm going to let you no, say no, no. it. No, hey, you know me. So what, what, what is it? I think it's got to be uh, the the Hardy Boys, isn't it? Wouldn't it be the Hardy I, Boys? I did love the Hardy Boys a whole lot, and that's that's the thing. It's like because it's entirely it's entirely biased. That was that was my childhood team. You know, you came in '92, yeah, but you have a deep plethora of you know love for wrestling. Yeah. And for me, it was like I came into DX and loving loving that. It's either but same time, the New Age Outlaws or the Hardy Boys. The New Age Outlaws <laughs> with a microphone in their hands, not necessarily in a ring. Yeah, I mean, no offense to them, they just mm. they did not have the level of excitement and ridiculousness <laughs> and just idiotic risk taking well, that the Hardy Boys can provide. That's an excellent choice. And the thing that people always forget is when you were a fan of the Hardy Boys back then, yeah. they were just as over as Stone Cold. Oh, they were They, they were, were rock stars. And they were innovators. And yeah. the fact that they brought tables, ladders, and chairs. Oh, my. Oh, my. That, yeah. that was, it, it was a it was a brand new thing. And yeah. it was something that was just like, I think I'm going to witness someone die. Like, I thought I was going to witness someone yeah. die during that event. And like, not only that, when Matt and Lita kissed, it was the happiest oh. moment ever because you wanted <laughs> them Lord. to be together. Mm -hmm. That whole drama, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, no. So, so are you saying the Hardy yeah, Boys? Yeah, it's, it's the Hardy Boys. Yeah. See, mine I'm conflicted yeah. because I have a childhood one, but then I also have my real one. But that's fine, dude. Yeah, yeah. My, child, for my childhood one is just Edge and Christian. Like you see, man. Yeah. From, back from The Brood and just watching them <laughs> yes. become like what they were. But my favorite, and that's why I wore this shirt, it's got to be The New Day. Yeah. Like, yeah. although I had gone out of wrestling shortly after, 
it was just something about this, like, wait, they're a tag team, but they have trombones, and wait, what are they doing? Like, the craziness from them is just, like, the power of positivity. When <laughs> creative never lets them write over. their own story. <laughs> well, yeah. And that, was, thing, that was a big difference. And the thing that blew my mind about it is I listened to a podcast that um, Xavier was on. Yeah. And the thing I did not know that he said was basically the New Day, he put his career on the line. Yes. Where he went to Vince and was like, hey, I'm tired at what I am doing. I want to change. Let me do this. If it doesn't work, I will leave the company. Yeah. And Vince goes, all right. Yeah. And he's like, luckily it worked. And they got a new clap on the crowd, which is not easy. Like, New Day Day Rocks rocks. was in pop. I remember (laughs) watching that for the first couple of weeks, laughing because they would yell at the crowds because they couldn't get it right. Yeah. It was like, you can't pattern it right. Yeah. No, no. It's not, it's, it's, da, 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 da. You yeah. have to do it that way. And it was just like watching them yell at the crowd to yeah. try to teach them how to do it. Yeah. But then like, he just used the trombone. That was dun, such a moment. Dun, dun, yes. Dun, and the, dun, dun. But the thing is, is that should have never gotten over and it did. Yeah. And that's the oh, awesomeness amazing. of it. Yeah. Well, and that's the great thing about wrestling is you I mean, don't know what's going to get Exactly. Yeah. I still, one of the most w- weirdly clear moments in my brain from wrestling is Fandango. His entrance. Oh, God, yeah. And the first time it happened, and it was just this... Confusion and then instant love, yeah. just outpouring of love from everyone mm-hmm. doing yeah. it, and it was just like, I don't know why this works, but it works. Yeah, it's it's, but that's the beauty of pro wrestling is anything can happen. Yeah, absolutely. Last tag team I want to mention. They're not my favorite, but I will always remember them. Do you remember Too Cool? Yeah, Scotty, Scotty Too Hottie. Hottie. Yep. Yeah, and the I, late great Brian Christopher. Yeah, I just remember seeing like seeing them on like either like a Raw or like I can't remember if it was Raw. Or and they were on, over like Raw. Rover too with Rikishi. Yes, yeah. I love like as a kid. Yeah. whenever they came on, I got behind them. Well, in yeah, heartbeat. you want to see the worm? Exactly. Oof. <laughs> Oof. 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 <laughs> just as ridiculous as the people's elbow. And I think that's yes. why now I love uh, heavy machinery. Mm. Of oh what they're yeah. doing, because he's bringing back the worm. Plus, uh, Dave and I were talking about beards. That so this is how boring the I don't want to say boring, but this is how the women's Royal Rumble affected our Rumble watching yeah. experience. So the good. women's Rumble happens. Yep, and then it's DB versus AJ Styles. Guess what we were doing versus DB versus AJ Styles? You were probably texting, weren't you? No, we were looking on my computer at. WWE superstars beards that I could possibly model like, mine after. I had that. Well, what was the consensus? Who could he grow after? We, at the time, we didn't have one. Yeah, except like we bounced between like, a couple. Yeah, like the the one Honestly, I want. The problem is he the, the connection here needs yeah, to get stronger. Yeah, that's the, the problem. The ones I want that I will never have is yeah. either Seth Rollins or Gargano. But mm. I figured out one that I might be able to do. Hmm. The um is his last name Dozovic from Heavy Machinery. It's just a messy beard that he grows out long. I'm yeah. like, I looked at him the other week and I'm like, I could do that. I think he could do Hillbilly Jim. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. You could absolutely get that. Yeah. But yeah, it's a shame because it's like if AJ had been if they'd slotted it that differently. It. Or if it was a standalone match somewhere else, I would I would have enjoyed the match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I was just so done. I needed well, yeah, I needed exhausted. to break. Yeah. Well, like you even mentioned to me, you're like, I'm gonna watch this one later. Yeah, yeah. I did. I'm it gonna watch good. it later yeah. when it's fine. Where I had missed the Brock and Finn one. I'm like, I'm going to watch Which this was later. a lot of fun. Yeah. Way better than I thought it was going to be. Absolutely. Well, we yeah. just thought it was going to be Brock Smash. Yeah. But it, it wasn't. going to be Brock Smash. So that's going to do it. We went for a little bit shorter than the Rumble one. But I mean, the it's Rumble's... Okay. The Rumble's the granddaddy. Oh, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, Pete. Yeah. I just... That's me with podcasts is I'm a... I'm a time junkie. Yeah, well, it's also, it's it's toasty in here. It's it about is. a billion degrees. Yeah. It gets a little hot in here. Like, I don't know yeah. if you guys can tell, but yeah. I'm like... Yeah, well, I got a, 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 an odor, I think, brewing under Uh-oh. this cardigan. So, so, that's, so that's why Dave started shifting It's called Pity City. It was the finishing maneuver of the Nasty Boys. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, thank you guys for listening to yet another wrestling podcast. Let us know what you guys think. Two things. Let us know what you think down below, and also... What would you like this to become in the future? Because it's not going to be like a normal, like, hey, let's do this every scheduled. But we are. I would like to do more of these. I liked your idea of just themes. Themes. But if you guys have any ideas. What's the name of the show? It's, right now, it's just an MVP podcast. 
is what it is. We even come up with a name. Yet. That could be a podcast determining the name. Determining yeah. the name yeah. of our wrestling podcast. But let us know what you guys think, Pete. I want to thank you for yeah. Thanks for having back. me on again. I didn't know if you were because I was like, okay, Pete, is he going to do two months in a row? Or is he going to catch on? I'm glad you did catch on. I though. did catch on. Yeah, I'll come back again. Like, you know, we'll, we'll go from there, see where it goes. And, of course, Dave. Thanks for having me on. Like, <laughs> I, I was not so sure I wanted to do this. Are you happy you stayed? I'm, I've enjoyed my time. I <laughs> I've enjoyed the, my I time. I hope the quality of the product has, <laughs> has stayed the same or, or, you know, at least, yeah. Well, thank you guys for listening. We will see you guys next time.